Hey guys, um, so back with another video. I've got two guests with me. Um, why are you laughing? <laughs> oh my god. Anyway, I've got two guests with me. I wanted to do a special sort of Black History Month um, focused video. Um, I have more video content coming for you, I promise. Um, but yeah, this is just going to be the start back into it. So, introduce yourselves, guys, and uh, we'll get into it. I'll explain more as we go along, I promise, guys. Hey, uh, my name is Zulay. I thought you were going to talk more. <laughs> my name is Dre. Okay, so what they were getting at is Zulay is Colombian. Her name is pronounced Zulay, but the way it's spelt... Um, you know, we Americans just simplify it and say Zule. So what I'm doing here is I have six questions that I came up with earlier um, that I want each of us to answer because not only are we black, but we're also blind. <laughs> oh my god. We have varying vision levels, so, you know, oh I thought god. it'd be interesting discourse. This is going to be completely uncut, unedited, so it'll probably come up to about half an hour and it'll just be all sorts of si silliness ensuing. Um... P.S. Just add all our disclaimers in. Dre doesn't like being on camera. Zulay's not happy with her face today. I sound like poop because I'm either dying from allergies or sickness. All right, now that we got all of that out of the way, um, how do each of you guys identify? I'm black. I'm black. Oh, wait, I guess I should have meant that. I'm an Afro-Latina. I'm an Afro-American. <laughs> <laughs> um, I identify as Afro-Caribbean-American. Um... Because on both sides, especially after my ancestry test, it's just all Caribbean. Um, but I also identified as that more so because I grew up with my mom, who's from St. Vincent. My dad, you know, it's complicated. And um, I just always thought of him as African-American, which, you know, he is because he was born here and stuff like that. But in terms of the culture that I grew up with, I identify as Caribbean-American. All right. So my next question for you guys um, what does it mean to be black slash what um, does blackness mean to you? Um, all right, so that's a little difficult because I think it depends on how deep we're talking. Um, so, okay, so if we're just talking about like how you identify like with someone who's black, I think there's just a certain sense of community that we all have and it's like, it's about shared experiences um, no, you, like, what makes you black? Like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah. Like, so it's like, from, um, it's like about shared experiences. So I, being Colombian and having, like, being an immigrant, um, and even though I grew up here, I grew up in a very Latin American household. So, like, when black people will talk about, when black Americans will talk about, like, like a lot of these cultural things that make you black, right, I... Mm, I don't know, always necessarily feel included. So for me, being black is about well, obviously my skin tone. I'm I'm a visibly black woman. Like you, if I didn't speak Spanish, you wouldn't ever assume that I was Spanish because. But that's maybe because a lot of people have this idea that there are no black people in Latin America. Um, I think that's changing a little more now, but that's still a, like a large perception that people have so for me it's about my skin tone it's also about my political identity and just like shared experiences like cultural like oh you got your ass beat by your mom when you were little um and like i know that that's true for other people as well but why are you laughing i did a thumbs up <laughs> no. double thumbs up no. carry on um but like i i understand that like that's something that like other people have especially people of color but it's just like it's something that is always comes up in conversation um, around black people, regardless of what flavor of black you are. Um, so for me, I agree with that. It's shared experience. Um, so growing up, I always joke and say that I had more curry chicken than fried, but it was still chicken. Uh, like that's oh, still con pollo. <laughs> that's still you know our our black stereotype. Um, and I feel like, so growing up, it was, it was a mixed bag because I, you know, had my Caribbean mom. I had my African-American godmother where I got my grits and my fried chicken and all that. And then, you know, my sisters who one was born in St. Vincent along with my mom and the other one was born here. And like all three of us listened to Soka Reggae Calypso, but we also, you know, were avid listeners of Hot 97. So we got in our hip hop and R&B and then, you know, um... I got into a lot more rock because of Disney Channel and stuff like that, even though my sisters did too. And 
So I feel like while the things that we listen to deviated, we still have the shared, like we still have the basis of everybody listened to or has some experience with the um, rap or I, I definitely want to say hip hop since that's like, you know, really pervasive, not necessarily in a bad way, but you know, it's a part of black culture, African American culture that's really spread throughout the world and so even if not everybody listens to reggae or, so or blah, 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 reggae or soca you know we all listened to r&b and we all can you know relate in some way and again we've got the shared skin color and you know in america if you're black then it like someone's not gonna look at um zule and be like oh you know she's colombian it's just gonna be like oh she's black she's probably african-american no one you know, just on first appearance, ap appearance, ooh, I cannot speak, um, on first appearance, like, we're all just black, and I feel like that, you know, is part of what blackness is, is, is having this, this com commonality. Dre? To me, being black, I feel like it's a sense of pride being black. Mm -hmm. I think it's very powerful nowadays. Me growing up, I was always the darkest in my family, darkest in the room no matter what room I was in, always was like top two darkest people in the classroom or whatever. And I always got, you know, black jokes, like African booty scratch up, all this. All <laughs> this. <laughs> Listen, it's true. I will say as a character, we won't touch that one. Never <laughs> I, I don't want to alienate any viewers. Okay. But yeah, I always got jokes like that. And I've always grown up, being darker was uh it was more of a like bad thing, but nowadays, everyone celebrates black culture, everyone celebrates black things. I feel like being black is just very pow pow a very powerful thing, and I just feel like black culture in general, whether it's movies, hip hop, um, not just hip hop, music in general, like, like what she said, soca music, Caribbean music, any type of music, R&B, hip hop, it just runs the world, and just black culture is just powerful. Black stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, cool. Wait, before you continue, oh, there's yeah. something else that I want to add. When you were talking about um, reggae and stuff, that was the first, like the first music that I can remember listening to was reggae, even in Colombia. I had an aunt who came... I, honestly, I don't know how she got the CD, but she got it. And it was like a whole medley of like reggae songs that like years later I'd be like, oh, I know this song. And like I was little in Colombia and I didn't know what they were saying, but like I, those were like I remember that. So just like how black culture has always spread um, in the diaspora. And then no matter growing up, I was always like made fun of because I was told that I sounded like a white girl and I was an Oreo and things like that. And mm -hmm. even in, like, no matter what black space I'm in, like, whether it's black American or black Colombian, I'm always told, you're not actually black because... Okay, I want to pause you there because mm -hmm. my next question is, how do you feel about the Oppression Olympics? And, like, does okay. anyone, light skin versus dark, have the right, for lack of a better term, mm -hmm. to, like, claim they have it worse? Or, like, you know, this group versus that group, you know, um, black Americans versus black Colombians or... Mm -hmm. um, the the, the motherland folks, the the, Af the, the real Africans, the real Africans. <laughs> or the Caribbeans. Um, yeah, all right, carry on. Okay, well, so to finish that out, like, there's, like, a lot of black culture, black Colombian culture. There's this thing called chontaduro, which is, like, I don't really know how to describe it. I guess it's a fruit. I think it's absolutely it disgusting. My whole family loves it. Like, they will eat it with honey or salt or whatever. If you want to gross me out, make me eat that. And I just... Miel? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and they just love it. And like, I'm just like, oh, I've never liked it. Ever, ever, ever. Not as a child. And there are never? things that. Never, <laughs> never. Forever? <laughs> um, there are things that as a child I didn't like. And now I'm okay with and vice versa. This has just been a thing that I've hated consistently. Or like, and we'll, when they'll talk about that, or like, um, Toyo, which is like baby shark and stuff like that they make on like the pacific oh my god i love you all right i'm sorry carry on is that a spongebob reference that's a baby shark all right please keep going she doesn't understand i don't guys i told you i had a very okay y'all grew up this is very this is this is very new yeah i don't i'll play for you later okay um I don't. But she came to the U.S. when she was when um, I was like four. four. But I watched 
novelas all my life. So I, I and she wasn't listening to my people's music here. When I yes, when I wasn't <laughs> listening to Louise People's music, I was watching novelas. So like all these references that people be like, Do you remember this blah 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 show? I'm like, No, but I can tell you about this novela though. <laughs> um so like and just like other stuff like that. Oh, so baby shark. And they like all love it and I'm like, This is not I don't it's like if I told people that I don't like fried chicken, they would be like, You're just not black, stuff like that. Um so no matter where I am, I've, I've always been told like that I'm not black. And then and so yeah, like how do you feel about that? So, the um, oppression Olympics, and then people always like working like you know it's okay. so easy to negate someone's but like you're not black because of this. I think that the oppression Olympics. I don't know exactly how to feel about that term, right? Because to say like oh we're playing oppression Olympics, like I understand that, and I'm conscious of not wanting to erase other people's struggle, but I think that we say that. Like, oh, at this point, you're just playing oppression Olympics because we're trying to be like, oh, you're just trying to one-up me on my, like, level of oppression. And that's not necessarily true because I'm a blind black woman, so I have, like, a blind Afro-Latina woman, so I have, like, multiple intersections of oppression, but someone who's trans or lesbian it faces more things than I do because I am straight and I am, where, but this isn't about gender. Um, so... Um, you asked about the light skin and dark skin. I think that all black people face oppression, obviously. But just like there's white privilege, there is such a thing as light skin privilege. And maybe you can face like discrimination from like your family. And I'm not trying to say that that doesn't hurt and that's not hurtful. But when we're talking about institutionally, you there has been a history of because you're lighter skin, because you are closer or you can, or you're closer to passing for white you light-skinned people have been seen as less of a threat or the ones that are have been more um financially well off that's not to say that there aren't core light-skinned people or people who haven't faced things because of that but i think it's a different level of oppression than a dark-skinned person um just like all women face sexism and misogyny but black women have it worse than white women like and to pretend that that's not a thing is just I think that you're either like just erasing people's experience because either you don't that's not your experience or you were not comfortable with that and I think the same thing goes for light-skinned people <coughs> um go ahead because I remember I forgot the other part you asked me so I got to think about that as well when I remember well yes yeah, so that, that was basically it you know oppression Olympics and like lighter skin versus dark um Dre what's your thoughts on that well I feel like black people were always that's one way we were always separated each other like segregated amongst each other the light skin versus dark skin like it was always rumors that you're like more light skin you're more you you tend to be more emotional if you're darker skin then you tend to be more like mad all the time evil you know go to prison or something like that but it's just it's just um it's just weird i think we shouldn't necessarily do the oppression Olympics? I don't know if that's the right term, but anyway, we shouldn't necessarily have an oppression Olympics because everybody goes through struggles. Like light skinned girls, they society look at them prettier than dark a dark skinned girl, right? But you'll see a dark skinned girl, and you'll see a light skinned girl. People most likely will go to a light skinned girl because she's light skinned, but you don't know you don't know what the light skinned girl is going through. You don't know like. She could have all these problems, and I'm just rambling, so hold on. I think... What? Oh, well, go ahead. No, go ahead. Did you know what I What I was going to say about that is you're completely right about that, but I feel like a lot of light-skinned women and Latin women who are lighter-skinned or who are, like, white-adjacent or whatever, they white have... Listen, you know what? No. <laughs> like, they derive... Because society has always told them that they're yeah, better than dark always... skin. So I feel like a lot of times, consciously or subconsciously, they derive their, like, sense of worth from that. And it's mm -hmm. like... But and that might also cause, you know, a complex. Because, of course. you know, you are... And I feel like this is, you know... While I definitely get 
where the um, problem lies, especially because people, you know, like light skinned people are like, oh, like you're not listening to this trouble, this struggle. And, um, you know, someone's like, yeah, but you're not listening to mine. And I feel like what it ultimately comes down to is that everyone tries to negate the other's problems. Mm -hmm. Like the light skinned chick is like, well, you're not listening to black skin girls, dark skin girls. Like, you're not listening to me either. And so I say, you know, the complex because, you know, it's like, okay, yes, I um, may be lighter. And then it's like, oh, okay, great. Now people are looking more favorably, but then on that note, it's like people are looking more favorably, but you know they're still not necessarily treating you as an equal. And then you know being ostracized because you're looking more favorably on, by the other person, which you know by the um, like darker group, and then the darker group is just being ostracized altogether. And I feel like you know I definitely get where everyone is coming from, but I feel like you know just at the end of the day like why aren't we all just working together to make a dialogue about it rather than as dre said just continuing to divide further because i think that in order to have a dialogue you do have to it's like you do have to sit down and acknowledge yes i may have this complex but you know what society isn't going to deny me a job if they're going to deny me a job it's because i'm black not because i'm light-skinned right so i think it's it's like when white people go like oh like well, why can't we just like all move on and get along and it's like because you have to reconcile the fact that mm -hmm. whether you want it or not this is a privilege that you have mm -hmm. maybe but you feel, I feel like horrible even when but it's someone still your does reality. acknowledge it you know then someone else still doesn't necessarily want to hear it you're you absolutely know what I mean? right but that's and that's the thing about privilege right and that's a, it's like you may apologize for something that you have done wrong or you may be like okay i understand how my people have oppressed you or whatever it is but just because you apologize or just because you try to be an ally doesn't mean that people have to accept you, right? Like, I I consider myself not to be, like, homophobic, right? But if LB LGBT people don't trust me because I'm a, a heterosexual cis woman and heterosexual cis women can be terrible to them, I don't have the right to be mad and just be like, well, why can't, why don't you trust me? I've already told you that this, that, and third. And it's like, yeah, but just because you want to be an ally or try to be an ally doesn't mean that everybody's going to accept you even if you're doing everything right that's just something that you kind of have to accept okay so i've been trying to keep our questions to five minutes but we both <laughs> kept going like everybody just kept going so i'm just going to shift on and the next one are like what are your thoughts on like mixed race biracial people and like you know their struggle with identity and how they identify because yeah. i told you about one of my favorite youtubers annie nova she is like you know she's mixed race and she talks about how like there have been people who like she's talked about black issues and people will look at her and just be like you're not black what are you doing and it's like you don't know from just looking at someone what their experience is what you know like i mentioned before like you know people will look at all three of us and just be like all right you're all black no one cares and like yes there's there's different in the shades of each of our skin but it's not like you know well this one's from the caribbean and this one is is from colombia mm -hmm. and this one's from the bronx <laughs> <laughs> i was trying to give you something fancier but you know i'm it's sorry the buddy. Bronx, <laughs> there is i mean and, you yeah. could just say new york yeah i mean and i'm from new york too but like just going off of like how i identify mm -hmm. you know what i mean um, but yeah, so you know, looking at a mixed race person, if they look whiter, you know, people are automatically gonna get, going to get upset. But you don't know how this person identifies just by looking at them. Um, you don't. I'm sorry. What was the question? <laughs> like I, 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 I went on. I rambled. Yeah. <laughs> like, what are your thoughts on like mix, 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 mm. mixed race people or biracial and their struggles with like identity and how to identify and fitting into like what mold they fit into? Like, you know, mixed race, but you're raised by a white parent, even if you identify with the black side, and then mm -hmm. people see you with the white parent, and they're like, oh, you're white. You think you're white, and it's like, no, this is just the parent that raised me, or, like, vice versa, you know? Well, I think there's the lyrics. You know what? I'm not going to do it. He's obsessed um, with J. Cole. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, in Grew Up Fast, there's, <coughs> he's talking about how, you know, he's half white, but, you know, that doesn't mean that he has a Ku Klux Pass. And I would just like to say that, yeah, like, you don't know people's struggles. You you can't... People are going to assume things off of you off of the way that you look, right? Unfortunately, that's the world that we live in. Um, there's, there's, like, issues with that, and we can discuss that. Hold on. I'm 
kiki going. <laughs> Man, there's definitely issues with that, and we should definitely try to work on that. But that is our reality, right? And if you have a mixed race person who is your complexion versus a mixed race person who is, gotcha. what's the girl's name that you like? Uh, Annie, Annie Nova. Her. Like, people, I mean, you're visibly black, right? And your dad could be white. He's not, but he could be, right? Like, and just because you look black, they're gonna, your experience is automatically gonna be more valid to black people who don't know you off the street because you look black. And we could talk about how that's messed up and all of that, but like, it's reality. Which is why we shouldn't judge people off of just how they look. Content of their character, not the color of their skin. Mm. Yes. I hate that MLK. speech. <laughs> wow. I okay. really hate that speech because that, um, it's a good speech. Talk to me later. I why just, you hate that speech? Because every right-wing person or person who's trying to discount whatever, they go, well, shouldn't we all be judged by the content of our character and not the color of our skin? And it's like, and shut up. If he was alive right now, y'all would be wanting to shoot him. Like, I really... Do you know the, um... What the fuck's his name? The, the one in the White House? Not, not, not the president. The vice president. Oh. <laughs> oh. I was yeah, like, girl. She compared... Trump to yes, like, yeah, yeah, girl, like, girl, girl. Okay, sorry, you're, gonna make, just, you're gonna make me break out in hives, okay? I cannot. Can, can we not get into details about that? That's sorry. Um, yeah, yeah, sorry. Um, <laughs> I just. So, like, I understand what he was trying to say, but I just, I hate, because that's the one speech of his that they always share, and it was the most whitewashed version. We're just gonna pick and choose what we want uh-huh. from this uh-huh. man's speech, and it's just. Yeah. I really hate that speech. <laughs> like, so Dre mixed race people. <laughs> Sorry. Well, biracial. I have nephews that are biracial, mixed race, mm-hmm. and it's interesting. My older, my second oldest nephew. Better like, is it interesting or like interesting? It's. I'm like, <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, my oldest nephew. He's um he's how old is he? Sixteen. That's he's sixteen. No, he's 16. no. You sure? He's turning seventeen. In November. Yeah, no, yeah, he's turning nineteen in next. But you said the older ones. So I thought all right. No, no, the second older. No, no. You're talking one. about. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about the ones who sounds like a girl. The uh, weird one. You're I hope he so doesn't watch rude. this. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> anyway. This is gonna go over thirty minutes, guys. Yeah. Carry on. Um, he's half Puerto Rican, half African American. He struggles, I see the struggle, even though he won't say it, but he struggles with trying to be more Hispanic. Mm-hmm. Like, he he grew up in an all-black household, because it's just his mother, who's my sister, who's black. His father's not there. His father is Puerto Rican. He has a younger brother, who's his full brother. What? Nothing. I'm, I'm just, I'm sorry. <laughs> We're just minor. We're being rude. I'm sorry. Go ahead. He has a full brother who, um... Who's also Puerto Rican, and he has a he has an older brother who's half Jamaican. He has a younger. He got a lot going on. He does. He has a younger brother who's just light skinned I don't know. Oh. What he's <laughs> <just>. <laughs> we just talked about I know, it. I know, but that's the best way I can describe him. He's mixed with something. I don't know. He's mixed with. Um, but yeah, he struggles because he wants to be. He, more in his, tune. he yeah he wants to be more in tune with his Hispanic side mm-hmm. because he grew up. Fully black, and so he, he wants just wants to. to the other. Yeah, he just mm-hmm. wants to experience his other side, and you know, get to know the that Hispanic side. Right. Yeah, mm-hmm. but like his experience is weird because like he'll he one minute he'll just be trying to speak Spanish, even though he really doesn't know Spanish. He takes Spanish classes in high school, but one minute he's trying to speak Spanish, next minute he like oh, I'm not. Not niggas like no tomorrow. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, but um. Yeah, I just think it's a very interesting, interesting, um, interesting battle, interesting struggle. I feel like it's I, another struggle that a lot of people is. don't acknowledge. Yeah. Um, I'm not biracial, but I am kind of stuck in the middle of two cultures. Bicultural. I guess so. Yes, yeah, you're bicultural. I'm bicultural. Because Ooh, I'm... I'm black, <laughs> but I'm not. Yeah, that sounds like too. Yeah, I'll try not to blow nasty. too hard. Pause. Um, um well, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not this inappropriate. I don't think I usually curse out here either. You see what they do to me? Oh my gosh. Yeah, I was gonna ask it's you about the niggers the having the influence. <gasps> Yo, what the? Oh, oh Lord have mercy! No, no, no. It's fine. It's no, fine. I it's don't okay. think it's recording. 
Oh, no, nah, I think it is. Oh, yes. I'm Yo, just, I'm, I'm kill you. you. Okay, carry on. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm sorry, guys. I don't record with them, as you know, so. Go on, it's really different. She, she went from phone conversations. She, Dre, she went from going, hi, guys, it's like beginning of my video, to like, these niggas. <laughs> Drop the R2 damn hashtag Black History Month for real. I'm just right. saying what you said. Um, all right, so you don't talk about my racist tendencies. <laughs> <laughs> so it's by bi- like, what did you call it? Bicultural. Mm-hmm. So it's very um, I identify as Black, and honestly, sometimes I forget to identify as Afro Latina because I like I know that I am, but I'm in America, and I'm also not my only Spanish speaking friend is Dominican and she's the only one that I have the rest of my friends are all black y'all all black every single one of you like different backgrounds or whatever but all of them different flavors black right flavors of black but we're all black but all black and so and I'm you know I live in New York and I'm very much immersed in yes in Nueva York but I'm very much immersed in black culture so like in black American culture so for me I just say like I'm black and people will be like oh but like you're latina or whatever and i'm like i i am but i think it's another thing because when people think of latin culture they think of like j-lo who's not black and shouldn't do the Motown. Jay, i was black. gonna say can we like can we touch on that motel no <sighs> like come on like jennifer hudson mary j beyonce can i get a beyonce even her, even you know what maybe like, beyonce was busy but I feel like she's always the default. She's always who, you know? Right. Like, there's, there's so many. So other many people. Kelly Rowland. Can I get Kelly? Maybe not Michelle. Her voice is too late, but you know. Um, but there's so many other, like, but black please, singers. Back on track. Oh, sorry. J Lo. Yeah, J Lo. Honestly, I don't know what y'all are just talking about. About the tribute. All right, so they had a Motown tribute. No, later. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, all right. <laughs> so J Lo and like Selena Gomez and we're supposed to be doing our closing thoughts now. Sorry. It's fine. I got one more question. And like Camila Cabello yeah, Cam- Cam- and like all these other uh, celebrities who are either white because you can be yeah, Latina and be white. Latina is an ethnicity. It's not a race. Or <laughs> you're like I said, bless you. Can you not in the middle of my? <laughs> you hurt your neck while saying <laughs> You never had a sneeze that soul. just like hurts your right. Not my neck. Carry on. Um, or just like white adjacent. So like when people think of I love this of a Latina, adjacent. they don't they don't necessarily think of somebody who looks like me. Or even if you do, like Cardi. Cardi is Money. very much lighter than I am. So she's like, oh, okay, yeah, she's Dominican, she's black, whatever. But like you see me and you just automatically think black. So for me, it's always a struggle of like, do I identify? Oh, and of course, I identify as Latina, but like. Which aspects of my culture do, um, present to the world? do I present to the world? And because I live in New York and I grew up in New York, I am very much at like a That's black still American. Radiating through my collarbone. <laughs> oh gosh, <laughs> sorry. I'm going to the doctor tomorrow. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's always a struggle to, and then also because I grew up here, I'm not particularly in touch with black Colombian culture and like sometimes I'll like go back and look up something or like talk to my mom and I'm like yeah I'm feeling real like black Colombian today like I feel my ancestors today um but it's not always the case it's not I just feel black I'm not sure if we actually answered the question but my next question is as blind slash visually impaired people um, you know, how do we all identify and deal with race? And I feel like we've kind of touched on it, but I do want to like go more deeply into it, especially because we all have um, we all have different like vision levels, mm-hmm. and so I feel like each of our experiences is, is you know like so both Zoo and I have the experience of like you know being called the white girl because of the way we speak and like stuff like that. But beyond that, you know, like how do you you know you can't see someone's race you'd have to wait until someone later told you you know so you one judge off a voice you judge off a name how do you interact with the person how do you feel like people interact with you mm-hmm. you know just just your impressions um, and talk about your level of vision uh-huh. well my level of vision I have pretty good usual vision usually when people meet me they don't he's not blind Whoa. Um, he's sorry I had a little sneeze there <laughs> <laughs> I'm I very visionary no that one's still ready <laughs> It's funny because, like, my visually impaired friends, they don't, they think that I'm not, like, visually impaired, but 
my friends that are he's not more visually visual. impaired than sighted, but he's a lot more. I have than I have enough usable vision where I guess I wouldn't like a visually impaired person wouldn't consider me visually impaired. But but legally he's blind. Yeah, I'm legally blind in both eyes. But um. <laughs> Yes, yeah. that's cool. <laughs> but usually when people right off the back when they meet me, they don't know I'm visually impaired because um I don't have a cane, yada yada. yada you don't got the eyeballs like mine. Yeah. I have a lazy eye. But um I, mean, I feel like that's like pretty normal though. Right. Oh, my lazy eye is really fucking lazy. Like that shit. Well, no, Russell Howard. He's not visually um he's a comedian that I like. Oh no no Russell Howard had a lazy eye. Anyway, um you know Russell Howard? I know I've heard of him. I don't think I oh, I seen probably sent you like clips. Yeah, you probably have. Okay, sorry. You guys should um, check out these people that I've mentioned, by the way, because I, I really like them. Okay, go ahead. I usually, I mostly get judged <laughs> off of the way I look. Like I have a hood on as of now. Um, Did I'm not taking my hood off because my hair is messed up. You I have dreads. By now, buddy, you don't wear hoods. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> my hair messed up. I'm having a bad hair day. I, I got you, bro. I got you. Um. I have you got it, King. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. I'm I have sorry. dreads. You know, it's very common among the black community to wear dreads now. And my dreads is braided, so the cornrow dreads, even double worse. And people when they judge when they look at me, a lot of people they judge me automatically I over my black. And I'm dark as hell. I remember one time let me tell you a few stories. Remember one time Oh, you said we get it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I remember one time walking Downtown, um, probably like way downtown, walking past spaces, past, and he's homebound. Like, <laughs> I love you guys. All right, go ahead. No, but um, seriously, one time I'm walking with my Dominican friend, our Dominican friend. She's also albino, so you wouldn't even know she was Dominican. Um, and she's also not like visually, visually impaired. She's visually impaired. No, no not visibly. visibly. Oh, visibly, visibly impaired. Visibly impaired. Um, yeah, so. We walking downtown. <laughs> we walking downtown. There's a few of us. We were lost, and we were looking for something. I'm like 16 years old. I walk up to this white lady. I ask her for directions. She looks at me. She grabs her purse and she keeps it moving. She really grabbed her purse. Yes, yeah, that she grabbed her purse and kept walking. She didn't have any money in it. No. White people upset me. I'm sorry. Poor sorry. Sorry. It's your opinion. So. That's one story. Like, she just looked at me, a big black man walking towards... And I'm big. I'm pretty big. Um, big black man He's walking muscular. towards... He's muscular. He's got a white chest and all that. Yeah, yeah. No. Anyway. He's not quite our height requirement. But like, he's somebody's height requirement. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, if you're 5'4", you could have him. Yeah, yeah. Listen, oh. I ain't short, though. <laughs> I'm, I'm he's not... He's 5'9 and 3 quarters, ladies. My brother just said, I might as well just say I'm 5'11". Nigga, like, you might as well. Somebody I found on Twitter off. said it was 6'2". He's like, I'm 6'2", so I might as well say I'm 6'2 and a half, which really means 6'3". So, really, I'm 6'5". <laughs> I was like, <laughs> sir, if I went on a date with you and you, I would be upset. Um, damn, I don't remember. Oh, white yeah. lady grabbed her purse. Oh, yeah, white lady, she grabbed her purse just because she see a big black man walking toward her. 16 years old, I'm... I have no intentions of hurting her. It was a winter man, outside. A boy. It was a winter outside. I had a mustache. And I got a mustache too. So. Um, That's not how you say mustache. Um, sorry, guys. My Spanish is bigote. Oh. I like I mustache. Say, you said better. she's Colombian, huh? Huh? She lied. Listen. Um, <laughs> but yeah. But yeah, so um, I had no intentions of hurting her. She just looked at me and automatically discriminated and assumed that I was trying to harm her or, or well, stuff from you her. shouldn't look like a thug. You exactly. shouldn't know that. Yeah, it's cold outside. I'm not going <laughs> to <anybody. laughs> So, you, do you feel like this, this has happened more than once? This has happened to me multiple times. I'm going to tell you another story where I was discriminated by the police. Oh, the, the turnstile? What? What turnstile? Oh, never mind. All right, carry on. <laughs> no, no, no. The elevator? Elevator? Andy? Oh, oh, you got a lot of yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to tell that story, but I'm going to tell another story about the elevator. So, I'm in fourth grade. <laughs> Fourth grade, I'm not that big. I'm I, when I was in, I got big when I was in seventh grade, like in the seventh grade, yeah. So, um, actually, really eighth grade, but anyway, so fourth grade, I'm I used to take the school bus to school because my school was all the way on the other side of the Bronx, and I live, I guess, it's considered South Bronx. So, okay, I was about um, to be like, can you not give out your information on the internet? I was gonna give out my information, okay. Yeah, that South Bronx sounded very disdainful, right. Mm-hmm. 
He lives in Sobro. I think he's so Sobro. Yeah, I live in Sobro. He's so bro. Oh my god. <laughs> so anyway, so my school is in Co-op City. I live. Maybe you're doing too much. No, no, this is what I was in fourth just, grade. Just, can we keep going, because so, I want this to be under 40 minutes. Um, anyway, so I, I leave. Under 40. Okay. I'm, I'm on a school bus. I get off the school bus. I, as soon as I walk in my building, I get on the elevator. The cops, they come. They they, they control my building, because I live in the hood. So I, I leave the elevator. Cops stop me. And they just like, where you coming from? Just keep asking me questions. They they put me on the wall. They frisk me. They search me. I had three dollars in my pocket. I was very upset at the time because I had three dollars in my pocket, and you I was really buy in fourth, like in early two thousand with three dollars. You, you could buy so exactly. much chips. You could buy the ice chips cream. This twenty five cents. Yeah. And the fifty cent bag with the big was the big. Yes. I could buy four bags of Doritos. Okay. I could buy a Snicker for sixty five cents. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right, this was in two thousand and four. Um, they searched me. They, they pull me against the wall. They search me like I'm a criminal. They throw all my stuff on the floor. I had mad candy wrappers in my pocket, too, because we had a big cell. We had a, not a big cell. We had a, <laughs> we had a candy cell in school, and I bought some candy. I was hyped. But, um, yeah, so they just, they looked at me. They assumed that I was a criminal. I had my book bag on. I had a school uniform on. They Damn. assumed that I'm a criminal. Like small. I'm mad little. They assumed I'm a criminal. They just put me on the wall. And this is my first interaction with the police. Never seen. Not his last, by the way. Years, no. Man. Never seen cops, like, I've seen cops in the building, but I've, you know, I never interacted with them. My first ever interaction with the police, and they, like, treating me like a criminal, just because I'm black. Um, another story, one time... Okay, wait, no, 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 <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, baby, but we can't. Um, alright, so, for me, I feel like my, um, race is often negated, by um, my blindness. Mm-hmm. And now I've definitely, whenever I have like camaraderic moments with like fellow, like just people of color in general, but generally black people, it's all it always feels really good because I feel like oftentimes, like I'm blind before I'm anything else. Mm-hmm. I'm blind before I'm a female. I'm yeah. blind before I'm black. Yeah. I'm blind before I'm a human. Right. And as you've seen on my <laughs> many rants. And um, so a few months ago, um, for example, I was walking and people are always tripping over my cane. Please, guys, hey, listen, if you're walking toward me, and you trip on my cane, I will laugh and walk away because it was your fault, okay? Yes, I'm I a blind will. person. You got the vision. You can see the cane. Now, Look if I'm walking behind you, I definitely, like, I do really feel bad. But again, you're probably on your phone. You're not paying, like, I just, I can't. If you try to jump over my cane and you bust your ass, Or oh, you break my God. cane, you better give me the $25 to pay for it. If you break my cane, it. If you bust your ass, I'm going to tell you Now, this is all, these are all things that have happened. And, but yeah, so... You know, there was one time I was walking and this guy like ran across the street as I was about to cross and he tripped over my cane and this guy came up to me. He's like, yo, you just tripped a white dude. Now you know he mad. <laughs> and I, <laughs> I was just so entertained because, you know, like just, just that moment of camaraderie, like I said. And, you know, growing up, I've had people, again, like, for the most part, it's been pretty good. But people are always commenting either on my skin color, like, you know, just how, like, me being light. Um or me sounding like a white girl compounded with the fact that I'm light skin or you know just like all of that and and it's always you know someone invalidating my blackness like oh you know like uh well you're Caribbean you're not like black and I'm like what the fuck like um we all were brought over <laughs> all, all of our ancestors were brought over I promise I just no matter where they um where they ended up they they were all brought over from Africa and you know I'm into rock, yes, but that doesn't you know that doesn't negate things. I would it doesn't just like negate. to point out that black people started rock, so mm-hmm. they did. And so you know, and so many of my friends Looks are into such. like such var- like a variety of. Th- excuse me. No, I'm good to you. Uh, <laughs> my friends are in like a variety of things. I know a guy. And um, <laughs> yes, you do. Stay in your lane. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and um, you know, and so I feel like. My interactions with race have generally been, like, through people trying to invalidate my own race, or, oh, the sneeze, it's not coming, oh gosh, okay, sorry, all right, um, you know, or, oh, all right, under 45, or people, um, <laughs> under that one. right, under hey, that one. it's no fine, gonna under wash it all, under there'll be that one person, not said, um, they just go around. I'll, I'll include my own timestamps. You know how people do it in the comments. I'll just put it in, like, just like, hey, we talk about this here, we talk about this here. Right. Um, but anyway, though, 
so yeah my interactions with race have generally been like it's always there it's always prevalent like my mom she was like oh don't use cocoa butter because like your skin will be darker my niece is um Every a lot to say a story you just make me and i'm really trying to keep my answer you use a lot of cocoa butter on you i, I mean maybe lot. that's why you so I, I don't dark. think so sweetie oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, i think that's all natural <laughs> Uh, my niece is darker than like most of us um, like my sisters my mom and I and she has a lot of issues with her skin like her skin is like clear and like her mom is just like she's gorgeous but she's like why wasn't I lighter like all of you guys and so like on the one hand we can't relate to the issues of being dark and then having people woo, comment on it all but day, day. on the same token mm-hmm. like we have had the issue <laughs> on the uh, on the same token we have the issues of people just being like ooh like you're a little too light to be doing this why are you doing that you know what i mean and so it's always prevalent but the way it goes about is different like i won't like i don't think I've ever been racially discriminated against because my blindness came first. Like, I can't walk up the stairs because, I don't know, my hands and feet work perfectly fine. It's just my eyeballs. Really, please. And of course they don't. Don't pursue it. <laughs> and I feel like sometimes, you know, in new interactions, I, you know, I might feel a little awkward and I feel like that might compound any issues, but I feel like if it was a sighted person who, I don't know, walked into that wall, you're not going to automatically, it's not going to be like, oh, sighted people walk into walls. It should be but like, it's all blind people. Attention. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Or this one is just a little, little like, clumsy. I mean, because I'm always spaced out. Which Wait, right. sorry. I don't mean to cut in. No, no, go ahead. Blind, like, the thing about blindness, right, we're, it's just like, when, like being black, This right? is just going to factor into the next thing. I was, I was just going to say closing thoughts on, like, race or blackness. So mm-hmm. this is just how we're going to, um, we're going to end it. Okay. So, like, the side, the being, like, walking into a wall thing, right? It's like, you have to be hyper aware not to do anything crazy or, like, any blindisms or whatever. Because it's like, oh. All blind people do that, and then and like, it's is very it a blindism? To, like, or I don't know. Let's say I, I I pick my nose. Oh not my all God, blind people. Do that. Mm. Not all blind people pick their nose. There's too much snot in there. So I'm not gonna, I was gonna do it just because, but there's too much snot in there. I'm not gonna lie, I've been picking my nose with this tissue off camera from now on. Anyway, so um, you know, like let's say oh, I pick nasty. my nose. It's like not all blind people pick their nose. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, but that's that's a generalization. But that's the stereotype. Generalization. Just like just like we feel like. Mm. <laughs> I'm not that everybody does, but like just like, I feel like my lips are so chapped, y'all. I'm sorry. Um, but just like we feel like, or just not we feel like, just like whenever we do something, all white people or all society goes, oh, all them blacks, all them blacks do that. And it's, it's like, another, like same thing with like blind section. Mm-hmm. Look at the niggers. Um, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> That's what the white people be thinking. You know it is. <laughs> um. For, well, are you done? Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Okay, you sure? Because I was just go ahead. Okay, so um, very similar to what okay. Lily is saying. No, eh, sigue. O oh, dale. Whatever. Vete is like leave. Get okay. the fuck out. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, I mean, you can do that too. Yeah, though. Leave. get the fuck out. I'm trying not to be an angry black woman. I'm sorry, baby. You know I love you. You know what? Okay, go ahead. You don't have to be angry. You could say you something mean in a nice voice. Mildly up. Um. So I'm highly uncomfortable with the touching going on behind my back, guys. Please stop. <laughs> that wasn't me. That was just, <laughs> Go ahead. Anyway, um, very similar to like what Lily said. Yeah, your blind, my blindness is always comes before my blackness. Like people always, before anything. Like they just. I feel like I have it. And you know what? Maybe there is some white person who sees me walking down the street and is like, oh, here comes this nigger. And it's like moves like to the other side of the street. Sorry, that hard R. Like it just gets it, me. It's very time. startling, right? Even when I say it. I'm Trey, sorry. where'd you put my tissue? Oh, <laughs> sorry. Keep going. Yo, you got friends that watch this? Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Melissa's going to be like, girl, this is 50 minutes long. I am not watching this. <laughs> I'm not even black. Like, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um... I don't even know what I was saying. Black blindness. Oh, yeah. Walking down the street. Walking. Yeah. Oh yeah, like maybe they'll walk across oh, the street, and I just walk. don't know because I can't see them. So I may have been discriminated again. Has an original point of view. You were saying? Oh, that's and I said, hey. Hey. What a wonderful, time. What, what, what what a wonderful kind of day where you can learn to something and play and get, and get along with, with each other. other. What is that from you, Arthur? Oh, yeah, I'm dumb. I forget about Arthur. Like, I don't even remember. I, yeah, I yeah. love Arthur, though, so I'm not... It, oh, I was about to say, you know what's Arthur? Of course I did. I used to... Milo? No. <laughs> um, Kobe. 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 Yo, Sorry. Why you gotta be so disrespectful to him, though? 
I mean, my local. I like my local. Y'all disrespectful. Have you hung up your poster? No. I have no way okay, to carry on. Okay. So I still have it though. Mm-hmm. You don't like um Kobe. I love Kobe. He cheated on Kobe. Don't, Wait, don't. Giannis. He cheated on him with Giannis. Don't Kobe. disrespect. Him. Please. Don't. Keep going. Um. So like, whatever. But when you were saying about like the camaraderie, say that word for me. Camaraderie. camaraderie. That word. Um. Camaraderie. 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 Uh-huh. The sense of community. Like the other day, I was walking um, from work. I was walking to the train station, and uh, I was crossing, and there was this white guy who was like, "Oh, do you need help?" Or whatever, and he was just like trying to walk me. And I was like, "No, I got it. It's fine." And this black guy was like, "Oh, you have the license? So just go ahead." And it was a black man, and I was like, "Thank you." Like, you mm-hmm. see, he just kept it moving, and it's like that sense of like having your blackness acknowledged is. It's always cool. Yeah, I've always really gotten sisters. And yeah, you know, and, and I was like, I always, yes. and I was trying to show up. Depends on how appropriate or inappropriate the comment is. It, uh, you know, I'm not too happy about it, but you know what I mean. That's like, right. Like, you feel like, accepted you know? by your people, and this is the one thing that I will say for you. Like nobody has ever said that's not true. I have a story about OK Cupid. Okay, so I have a profile on OK Cupid, and there was this one guy on the race thing. I have checked black and. Latin. This one guy messaged me and said, "Your black ass ain't um ain't Hispanic." <laughs> <laughs> First of all, I've been told that I'm not black because I speak Spanish. I'm clearly black. Anyway, I have never been told that I'm not Hispanic. I was like, "Yes, I am. I was born in Colombia. My family's from here." He said, "No, you're not. You're darker than me, and you just hate yourself. And this is really sad to see." And I was like, and he's like, "Oh, I'm um." My sister is was born in Italy, but she doesn't claim Italian because she's an African American, and I'm half something else. I don't remember. He said he's like, but I'm African American, and that's what I claim. I was like, your sister doesn't claim Italian because you, the place that you were born is not your heritage. That's just where you were born. She's not Italian because she doesn't have any Italian blood. Blood. I was born in Colombia. My family was born in Colombia for centuries. Like, that's where the slave ship dropped off. I really. I hate that I have to defend my blackness by bringing up slavery because I'm like that shouldn't be whatever anyway but he said that and I was like sir and he was just not trying to hear it he was like clearly I have self hate because I'm claiming Latin American and I'm I'm not I'm clearly not that on that note there are a lot of people who like you know um, depending on what I do with my hair they're like oh like it's it's soft like you have to be mixed with something else and it's like a point of pride because it's like oh like you can't be happy only being you know just African and you can, you you know you're gonna have nigga hair gonna have nigga naps and just whatever and it's I like I feel like that. people don't acknowledge you know the difference of just so many things like it's it's just always assumption and again so this is something that I'll get from um, like closer friends and I feel like this is where the the race usually comes in like the racial stuff like it happens more internally because it's just like I feel like people think we're blind so we live in this utopia and mm-hmm. so for me um I didn't explain my vision I oh I didn't do that either I can't see I just she, light. she has like I just have light perception <laughs> thank you oh gosh Your shoulder, oh yes I got the perfect mm-hmm. time to just do the Caribbean oh gosh <laughs> You might never hear that one again, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, yeah, I, uh, what was I talking about? Mm. You're here. Oh, yeah. So people talk about that, and, you know, people talk about my features, and they're like, you know, you, you don't got, like, typical nigger features. Oh, and really, you can't say nigger sound know, just so white. That's, like, that's it's, it's what I get. It doesn't matter how they sound. If they sound white, but they look super black, it's, it's perfectly fine, then it's, it's okay. But again, this comes from family, this comes from, you know, because people externally, it's like, oh, she's blind, so she can't, you know, this isn't an okay thing. But being blind, like, it's still internal, it's still there, it's still, like, prevalent in the media, it's still mm-hmm. everywhere. We still consume media the same way that everybody else and does. so for me i can you know um so my vision has worsened over the years but i can still see someone's skin tone i can see you know depending depending on how close i get to you dre i was gonna demonstrate but i feel like i probably shouldn't Oof. um and you know like there are more details or whatever um but i you know i, I definitely can and sometimes i can't tell because if you're you know like, like, I might not be able to tell, like, about, um, like, specific coloring or something like that, you know, so you might just look brown. I don't know if you're necessarily, if you're Indian or Muslim or, you know, anything like that, but, um, Middle Eastern? Yeah. If you're Middle East, yeah. I, I was like, I gotta fix that. I wasn't quite sure how. Um, 
you know, but I will be able to tell that, and you know, I can go off a of voice, make judgment calls there, right. and, which you know, is not foolproof because if you hear me on the phone and if yeah, if you just hear me anytime, um, you know, and it's just like it's still there, it's still prevalent, it's still something that I'm aware of, still something that I comment on, and I don't necessarily like I I might have predis. Pre- preconceived. Kind of preconceived. Thank. Oh, I'm not an English major. Uh-uh. I may have. Be, <laughs> I may have preconceived notions about, but you know, I may not like judge on it or whatever. It's just like kind of like what I've grown up here. Like my mom's comments on different races, different islands, different. You know, and like automatic, I'll just be like, oh, and I'm like, okay, that's not. Why are you thinking that? But you know, it's just automatic because this is what's constantly shown to us as blind people. Zoo has light perception, but she's still like, you know. Okay, I'm very pro-black, right? I'm very, very, very pro-black. So, uh, this idea that, like, black so black. many people... S- Sorry, I'm going to do the this, but, like... Um, <laughs> this idea that, like, because we're blind, um, oh, then we, we don't care about external things like race and stuff like that. It's like, nah, we, we grew up in the same, same society. I mm-hmm. definitely affects listen. You, affects you. Affects <laughs> with an A. Oh, yes, yes. Um, we definitely still do because we still consume media. We're still we still have the same like experiences. We still have family members commenting right. on things. Exactly. I was told by a family member that it's good that I don't look like a typical African American. Like I'm still black, but you know. Oh, that was the other thing that you asked. You asked about Black American versus the rest of the diaspora, right? I'm very protective of Black American culture because I feel like so many other black people like non-black americans shit on black american culture oh, but we all you... benefit from black american culture mm-hmm. however i'd be getting tight because i would be the first one to defend black american culture and then the black american will turn around and go well, you you're, you're not, not black, black. and mm-hmm. i'm like nigga <laughs> hello <laughs> no nah, but um this is not saying this is not defending the fact that people say you're not black but growing up I used to see a lot of dark-skinned Hispanic people, and I used to be like, "Oh, you black," and they used to be like, "I'm not black." Yeah. So. But that's a product of like, Latin. This this is not the word for that. Latin American girl. We'll talk about it another time. Yeah. <laughs> but but you're right. You're but definitely yeah, it's right. It just comes out so many like preconceived prejudices, prejudice. No prejudices. prejudices. Sorry. Right. And, <laughs> and you know, just ultimately, that's what it comes down to, and I feel like. You know, having this discourse is fun, and I feel like more people need to sit down and have these conversations. Oh, the sneezes are coming. <laughs> okay. Um, Put your finger over your nose. I don't want it. It's naughty in there. I got you. I, no, oh! <laughs> I'm going to use the pen. Oh, my God. Anyway. All right. Final thoughts? Any last things? This is like 20 minutes of final thoughts. I know. Oh, my God. Um, final thoughts for me. I'm very proud to be black. I'm very proud to be an Afro-Latina, but I will always... I cannot not... Like, I can't choose one over the other, but if I were absolutely forced to, I always choose my blackness, always, because I'm very proud of being black. I'm very proud, like, yeah, just all black, black power. Black is beautiful. Yes. Black comes in all shapes and forms and sizes, no matter- We are all beautiful. No matter we- I felt like you pulled away a little bit. You know what? No (laughs) point to that. (laughs) Um, no matter where you at in the world, if your skin is dark, if you, res- if you acknowledge your blackness, mm-hmm. it's a beautiful thing. Yes, it is. And no matter um, where you are, you're... Sorry, I'm sorry, Jay. No, no. It's just... I, I don't want to be like those people who are like, can we just like all love each other? Because there's obviously nuances to that. But we just all have to like understand recognize the fact least. that... Right. Understand and recognize the fact that if you are black or if the world perceives you as black... There's going to be racism and discrimination against you. So can like we just all bond together and like fix our issues and just love each other as black people? Yes, it is is a very, very powerful thing to be black, in my opinion. Um, black people, like I said before, I feel like black culture runs the world. Everyone wants to be a part of black culture. Music, everybody fashion. wants a part of black culture. Yeah. They don't want to be black, though. Yeah, yeah. I'm also like really proud of my black. I'm like really happy so whenever I'm just I find. Like my 
groups that are like specifically black not just people of color that are just black yes. and you know that don't you know because they're all like a range of blacks i'm not like feeling awkward because like oh i speak like this or because like of how light i am versus not you know and i feel like that's also a thing i still you know feel uncomfortable actually with being light-skinned because of how many people have commented and just stuff like that and sometimes even just like you know there have definitely been times where i'm just like i would need a lot of gel to get my hair into like a like a real afro uh-huh. And you know, I'm just like, damn, like I'm not cool to get that. Do you want to because you're light skinned? You're not going to. It's fine. Yeah, I'm so not. I- <laughs> as many dark skin as yours I've heard. <laughs> She but, should be at it. Yeah, she you know, like, at the end of the day, like I said, I'm really cool. Like, you know, just all the cultural things. Like, I and I love that I enjoy, like, a range of cultures. And, you know, I love all the people who do. And, I, you know, if you're only into hip-hop, if you're only into, like, Soka, like, definitely no judgment. But I feel like in terms of how you judge other people, and, like, that's that's what it ultimately comes down to. Because I don't care what you do with your life. But don't judge me for, how, like, what I do with mine. You know, what right. I choose to listen to. And, and also that. learning out history. Rock was... Most things that people consider white people considers their consider theirs have been black to begin with. Look like at the influence um, Haitian Rara and like other Haitian um, like Creole music has had on um, jazz and um, Afro Cuban music and Afro like Afro his oh, Latin cool. music, Latin music and and you know and all the stuff that eventually led into rock and all that you know. Mm-hmm. All right, kids. We are at like 55 minutes, so let's end this here. I'll be back with more videos. Wait, before we end there, I just want to say one thing. Mm-hmm. If you see... Yo, you see? He's a man and he's black. He wants the last word. My channel. I just want to say... Hello, saying. she's a black woman. Why are you trying to... Sorry. Well, she can say, I, she can say something after me. <laughs> no, no, no. So I'll end with you. Um, if you see a blonde person with a sighted person, the blonde person can speak to herself. So don't walk up to the sighted person oh. and be like, oh... Um, do your friend want this? Do your friend want that? Ask For my them. blind they viewers, have... I was frantically waving my thumbs. <laughs> they have... We're going to put what? you in some stilts and we're going to get married, okay? Because <laughs> I hate that. I hate that with a passion. Like, Dre, I would marry me. you, okay? I've got a thing for six feet and up, but you know, I'm unlike I mean, Zoom. He, would be, the, he would be the only no, exception I made. But Zulay, see, is... see, you was doing good until you started saying foolishness like that, <laughs> okay? Oh my gosh. Okay. I... Five ten, five ten. I'll do... Dre, I've always said my height and taller. I don't know if mean it, but I, I can do 5'9 and up. 5'10, <laughs> you three quarters, right? We yeah, three quarters. <laughs> I'll put on some Tim's. I'll put on some Tim's. Yes, wrap the box. Okay, boo, you got it. <laughs> but yeah, no, I definitely agree. Talk to us. Act like we're people. We could probably end up having people. like really cool discourses like this, no matter what the blind person's culture is. If they're from Montenegro or Colombia or El Salvador or... The Bronx or Brooklyn, like we. we Hello, can I get a queen shout out? No. No, you got Columbia, Tiffany. Exactly. Oh, oh my, he's black one. They can't. He's not know, happy. Right? Damn. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'll be a little bit dicey, but I'm sorry. I'm gonna stay in my corner. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>